why would Canadians, contrary to our own values, embrace a practice at that time that is, that is not transparent, that is not open, and frankly is rooted in a culture that is anti-women? When he talks about a culture of 1.8 billion human beings as being anti-woman. He just decreed that yesterday in the House of Commons. They're trying now to back away from it, but he said what he said. Can he please explain to Canada's half a million Muslim women why he said their chosen faith is anti-women? That's just some of the heated debate this week about a controversial issue, the niqab in Canada. That's where we start the Sunday Scrum this week. Joining me now from Ottawa, the CBC's Rosemary Barton, freelance writer Susan Riley, and in Montreal, on the left side of your screen, Martin Patrick of McLean's. Well, this isn't the first we've heard of this topic. Uh, this has been swirling around for quite a while. It reminds some of us who are around to remember the Sikh turban debate of about 25 years ago. Uh, Rosemary, start with you. How's it playing out uh, in Ottawa? You know, I think that the initial comments from uh, the Prime Minister uh, and the whole push to not have uh, certain Muslim women, of, of which there are not that many, let's be frank, uh, wear a niqab during the citizenship ceremony, I, I think that that played out pretty much okay, to be quite honest. I think that a lot of Canadians um, would agree with the Prime Minister's sentiments there, that in that instance you should have to lift your veil and prove your identity and, and what have you. Uh, that, that's my perception anyway. But I think that this week, when the Prime Minister moved those comments into a different realm by saying that this was rooted in an anti-women culture, uh, he went somewhere that I'm not sure he was fully intending to go. I'm not sure that it has uh, played out as well as, as they would have liked. I, and I'm not even sure that it was sort of an agreed-upon talking point, to be quite mm -hmm. honest. I, I think that he pushed it a little bit too far, um, and that that has now put him in a, in a more difficult position than he had previously when he just took the stance about the niqab at the citizenship yeah. ceremony, which I think generally went over okay. We're now into something else, which the opposition parties are, are trying to push hard, as you can imagine. Uh, Susan, I, I saw you nodding in assent there about the uh, opening of the Pandora's box. Uh, is that, do you think this was a planned strategy? She's not able to hear us. You know what, I'm going to talk to Martin for a second. Yep. Martin, yeah, what, what, answer that question. Well, <clears throat> the whole anti-woman, the, 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 the term anti-woman culture, you know, it, that could have been out of the lips of a peakist uh, last year during the election or someone on, like, literally hardcore feminist sovereignists in Quebec. And I think it's sort of under, under, under uh, uh, it sort of talks, text talks to the point that I think Harper is proselytizing a little bit here, f uh, if I can use a terrible term. <laughs> um, this is for Quebec. Look, Quebec, he, he, he introduced the, the idea of, of challenging this in the court in Quebec. He made a big deal about doing so in Quebec. And it, it underscores the fact that uh, the banning of religious face wear of any, of any sort, you know, uh, during a citizenship ceremony has huge support in Quebec, whether you're a federalist, whether you're a sovereignist, whether you're on the left, whether you're on the right. So I think what he's doing here is going after a little bit of NDP support. Um, not necessarily support, you know, hardcore NDPers, but people that voted for NDP last time around uh, for the lack of anybody else to vote for. Uh, and, you know, it's no surprise that the Bloc Québécois is, in fact, doing the exact same thing. And you, it's interesting, too, because you, you saw that, uh, you know, Mulcair came out very stridently against what, what Harper said. He's backing off that a little bit now because he's seeing that him coming out in favor, quote-unquote, of the kneecap uh, isn't playing out very well in the province. I, I guess, and this is what Rosemary was talking about, my understanding is that you, they lift the veil to identify themselves. It is, it is the actual ceremony itself. Now, is that, am I missing something there? What, what, what happens is, is the, it actually has nothing to do with identification. If you read what the, what the, what judge uh, said in the, in the, uh, in the decision, the woman in question raised her veil beforehand, right. before there was any sort of public ceremony to identify herself. If you read what the government, uh, the reasoning behind the government's want of, of a, to, for a woman to, to raise her veil was to physically see her mouth the words. They have to mouth the words. It has, doesn't have much to do with identification because the person that is there has already been identified by a citizen judge. Okay, so a swearing in not to be done, but has to be seen to be done. Susan, you, you've, got to be, exactly. yeah. you, you've got your ears on now. Yeah, weigh in. Oh, I was just, I was just going to say, John, that um, 
everybody's got an opinion on this, but the most illuminating interview I've heard Rosemary did earlier this week with two Muslim women, one of whom was very adamantly opposed to the to the um, mm -hmm. niqab and also to the hijab, as a matter of fact, and and agreed that they were symbols of oppression and and that she came to Canada so she didn't have to submit to that regime. The other was a, a younger woman who, interesting, was not wearing a niqab during the interview, but said that every once in a while she liked to do that and she she had actually abandoned it because of hostile glances and public pressure and whatnot, but she presented it as a choice. And as I listened to her, I don't know how representative she is, mind you, in Saudi Arabia, obviously it's not a choice, um, but uh, as she represented it, it was a choice issue. And, uh, and of course, there's been this uh, Twitter thing about uh, dress code, hashtag PM, about, you know, Prime Minister Harper telling women how to dress before they go out the door in the morning. So the whole thing, I, in, in a funny way, it's had an educational element to it, I think. I mean, I have learned, I, I was one of, I was instinctively against the niqab, uh, still don't like it, still do find it offensive, um, but I realize it's more a a, nuance the debate, and B, mm -hmm. it involves a very small number of people. In no way does it represent a security threat to anyone. Um, and it's a huge distraction and quite a damaging and hurtful one for a lot of people in the Muslim community. Well, but, but, but it's a hell of an electoral cudgel for, for Harper, as we can see in the last few weeks. Oh, well, I guess. Uh, I think you're absolutely right. But that is awful, exploiting a minority, especially a harmless minority. Uh, to gain political advantage. I know I sound so innocent, but I, I, it is I, horrible. I totally don't, well, I, I totally I, I don't disagree with you. I think you're right. Head. This is about who this is actually going after, and that is yeah. the NDP. Uh, it is a real, uh, is causing them serious, serious headaches because there are MPs who may either agree with Harper or there are MPs who disagree with Harper, but they know that most of their constituents agree with Harper. P primarily, I'm talking about the Quebec element, Quebec caucus inside the NDP. And so, it, it is very hard to even uh, get Mr. Mulcair to say the word niqab. He will talk about the federal court ruling and how they general, uh, generally agree with the ruling itself, but they, they know that they can't push too far either way and that they have to play this um, slightly differently, potentially, in Quebec because there has already been this discussion around special yeah. accommodation uh, of religious and, and cultural rights, and they know that there are vast amounts of that province that would agree with what Mr. Harper is saying. So as much it is, you know, as, as cynical as it may be about targeting this minority, it's also about targeting the NDP in that yeah. province, and well, Marty's quite spot on there, as he is all the time. In, in a way, <laughs> I guess that the long gun debate was used, too, to kind of corner the NDP. Uh, just uh, before we leave this topic, we're going to look at the, uh, the idea of ridicule in politics, and politicians always run uh, a danger when they do that. So the comments going viral on Twitter uh, to the reactions to what the Prime Minister said, things uh, like this. Okay, PM Harper, my outfit okay. Am I still part of the Canadian family? Dress code PM. Uh, hey, Mr. Harper, I'm not smart enough to dress myself. Does my stethoscope work with my outfit? Again, dress code PM. Um, and then uh, will backlash Dog Harper or will there be a benefit playing to his base? So that's the question there that people are, are asking as it goes out there. Uh, I guess maybe separate but not unrelated, the Bill C-51 debate. Has, has the niqab uh, taken the focus off some of the C-51 that we've seen out there, some of the debate in the public? I mean, is it, are, they, are they linked in the public's mind in any way? I, I, think, uh, I think on that question, I, I was at the, the press conference where Harper announced it with Steve Blaney and Peter McKay, and uh, I, I can't remember, I, I should have counted before I came on, but it was at least five times he said the word jihad and uh, linking it to the Muslim faith when he was announcing uh, Bill C-51. So I think he's actually sort of, con uh, he's he brought the two issues together. I think people can now look at it and say, look, he's talking about kneecap, he's talking about Bill, 50, Bill C-51, we're talking about Muslims here. And protests across the country yesterday. We saw, we've, we've heard from the constitutional lawyers, we've heard from the former head of CSIS, we've heard from others, people taking to the streets across the country. Is this the start of something, or is this, uh, is the Prime Minister getting the wedge issue he wants or the political hot potato he doesn't want? I don't think... Sorry, I don't think it is the start of something necessarily, uh, John. Mm -hmm. I don't think the protests, while significant, were big enough to influence the government. I mean, what would influence the government? To me, what was more devastating was the parade of witnesses before this parliamentary committee this yeah. week um, who were learned, um, whose tone was for the most part, not very hysterical, and who did a really point-by-point -point forensic analysis of this bill and how it might uh, hurt liberties, uh, hurt Canadian liberties. Now, the question is, of course, 
their their reasoned um, arguments fell on deaf ears. Um, the you know the, the the conservative members there were just not interested. They were more interested in picking a fight. Um, nobody expects there to be any amendments to the legislation. But insofar as Canadians are paying attention to what the critics are saying, um, I think it's going to plant uh, seeds of doubt, and uh, we'll see what happens in the end. Yeah, I mean, every every witness that has appeared uh, so far, other than the ministers, obviously, uh, have said either amend this uh, on various, various different points, not all the same points, or scrap it and start again. I think the problem uh, here for the critics of this bill, um, and obviously not the problem for the government, is that they, we are on such a uh, tight timeline to get this mm -hmm. bill passed, because the government has made it so, right? Very few days of hearings, uh, very s short periods of time for witnesses to be heard. Already we're back into a break week this week. So the momentum that had been building up last yeah. week with the witnesses is gone this week and will have to be recreated. And because there's such a time crunch on hearing the legislation, on hearing from the witnesses and the critics, I think that it is hard for the Canadian public to sort of pick up steam, right, and gather mm -hmm. momentum against the bill. And I think that, it, that that is being done intentionally by the government. Um, and so so I, I think that we'll hear from more witnesses, we'll hear more concerns, but I'm not sure we're going to see it galvanize Canadians, as maybe yeah. it should, just simply because there's not enough time and, and the government is playing that hand.